Chapter 20, The City Destroyed When the city came into view before them, the three travelers stood speechless, gazing out over ranges of hills, standing dark against the western sky. They could see that this, this had once been a city. To, to the right, a cluster of tall buildings still stood, tall beyond anything Lena had imagined. But they were no more than shells of buildings, hollow and broken, their windows only holes. Through some of them, Lena could see the sky turn scarlet by the sunset. All else was a windswept wind wasteland. Whatever buildings had once been here had long ago fallen and crumbled into the ground. Earth and dust and sand had blown across them, and grass had grown over them, softening their outlines. Here and there, traces of ruins remained. They looked from this distant like outcrops of stone, hardly more than jagged places on the smooth slopes. Faint lines of shadows shone where streets must once have been. Lena stared trembling. This was far, far from the city she had imagined. Not even the virgin, virgin she'd re revised for the disaster had looked like this. This couldn't be called a city at all anymore. It was the ghost of a city. Even Casper seemed daunted. He craned forward, his hands shading his eyes. It looks somewhat destroyed, he said. It looks completely destroyed, said Maddie. They got down from the truck and stood beside the oxen. A trick of the light, said Casper, squinting harder. He pulled his glasses from his pocket and put them on. When, he get, when we get closer, you know, you, no doubt it will look different. How do you plan to get closer, Maddie asked him. And for the first time, Lena saw that a few yards in front of them, the road came to an end. There was an edge of broken pavement and beyond it, a great slab of roadway slanted downward. It had stood in pillar, on pillars once. You could see a few of the pillars still standing and rods of thick wire twisting out of them. From here on, the road was a chaos of concrete, gigantic chunks leaning against each other. There was no way the truck could go on. The sun was nearly down now and the brilliant red of the sky was fading. Between the ruined buildings drifted a gray mist and the wind blew more sharply. Some white bir birds soared high above, screaming. It used to be so beautiful, said Maddie. I've seen pictures of it in books. There was a tremor in, the voice, in her voice. Lena looked up and saw that tears stood in her eyes. I knew it was destroyed, Maddie said, but not like this. What happened to it, Lena asked. It was the war, said Maddie. They must have been, she shook her head. They must have been terrible, she said. What, what were they about, Lena asked. Maddie shrugged. I don't know. And the people li who lived here, what happened to them? All killed, I suppose, said Maddie, or most of them. Casper was frowning at the shadowy wilderness that lay be below. In the daylight, he said, I'll be able to see how to proceed. Proceed, Maddie grabbed Casper's arm and wrenched him around to face her. Are you out of your mind? Casper yanked his arm away. No, he said, I am not. Maddie swept her hand out toward the city. It's miles and miles of buried rubble, she cried. Streets buried under fallen bricks and broken glass. Mountains of concrete and melted metal. Sand and earth blown over it all. And grass growing on it. Casper nodded his face grim. Right, he said, and a challenge. You were right about bringing this one along. He tipped his head toward Lena. Someone small and light, that's what I'll need. Going to have to do some tunneling. No, Casper, said Maddie. You must give up this idea. You can't find anything there. I can't, said Casper. I can't find it. I have the numbers. I have it all worked out. He plunged one hand into his pocket and scrambled around and brought out a scrap of paper. He snatched his glasses off, put the paper up close to his eyes and squinted at it. Lena took a step closer to him and peered sideways. The paper was black with scribbling, a tangle of words and numbers and cross outs. 47 E's, muttered Casper, 399 5 West. His eyes flicked back and forth between the paper and the dark hills before him. Flick, flicked faster and faster. 71, he mumbled. It's just a matter of, in the daylight, he, can, he caught his sight of Lena. What are you staring at, he said. Nothing, said Lena. She felt suddenly sick and frightened. Maddie was right. Casper was out of his mind. The sun disappeared behind the farthest hill and darkness fell. Maddie turned back toward the truck. We'll camp right here tonight, he said. We still have enough water in the buckets. They set their blankets on the side of the truck. 
away from the wind, Balina shivered and couldn't sleep. After days of, of longing to arrive at the city, she wanted nothing now but to leave. This was a terrible place, full of angry ghosts and sad ones. When she closed her eyes, she seemed to hear their voices, shouts and screams and a dreadful sobbing and, to, and see flashes of fire in the smoky sky and sheets of flame sweeping through the streets. A wail escaped from her. She couldn't help it. She felt so afraid and miserable. A moment later, she heard Maddie's voice close to her ear. Let's talk for a while, Maddie said. Okay, Selina. She sat up, wrapping her blanket around her. Casper was pacing up and down on the other side of the truck, muttering to himself. What about him? She said. Don't worry, answered Maddie. He's lost his calculations. A gust of wind shook the truck. Its loose fenders clattered. I hate it here, Selina. Yes, said Maddie. Terrible things happen in this place. You can still feel it. Were the people in those old days extremely evil? Lena asked. No more than anyone, Maddie said. But then, why did the wars happen? To wreck your whole city, almost your whole world, it seems like some, something only evil people would do. No, not evil, at least not, not at first. Just angry and scared, Maddie was silent for a moment. Casper's footsteps came closer, crunching on the gravelly ground, and then receded again. Lena inched a little closer to Maddie. It's like this, Maddie said at last. Say the A people and the B people get in an argument. The A people do something that hurts the B people. The B people strike back to get even. But then, but that just makes the A people angry all over again. They say, you hurt us, so we're going to hurt you. I'll keep on like that. One bad thing leads to the worst bad things on and on. It was like that. It was like what Torin had said when he was telling her about the disaster. Revenge, he'd call it. Can it be stopped, said Lina. She shifted around under the blanket, trying to find a place to sit where rocks weren't digging into her. Maybe it can be stopped at the beginning, Maddie said, if someone sees what's happening and, it's, and is brave enough to reverse the direction. Reverse the direction? Yes, turn it around. How would you do that? You, you'd do something good, said Maddie, or at least you'd keep yourself from doing something bad. But, but how could you, Selena, when people have been mean to you? Why would you want to be good to them? You wouldn't want to, Maddie said. That's what makes it hard. You do it anyway. Being good is, is hard. Much harder than being bad. Lena wondered if she was strong enough to be good. She didn't feel strong at all right now. Time to, keep, time to sleep, said Maddie. Lena pulled the blanket over her head and still she could feel the wind and, her, and hear the oxen making low, uneasy sounds. She heard Casper still pacing too and muttered under her breath. I want to go home, she thought. And for the first time, the picture that arose in her mind was not of the dark, familiar building of Ember, but of sparks under its bright sky. She thought of Dr. Hester's house and the garden blooming in the sun and the doctor puttering with her hundred plants. She thought of Miss Myrtle sitting in the doctor's courtyard, basking in the warmth and Poppy playing with a spoon beside her. Even Torrin was in the picture, proudly arranging his possessions on a window ledge. And, of course, there was Dune. He should have been her partner on this journey. If he were here with her, she'd feel less afraid. She missed him. Maybe when she got back to Sparks, he'd be tired of hanging around that boy named Tick, and he'd be ready to be her friend again. <laughs>